How the world's largest tunnel was built. The St. Gotthard Base Tunnel, located in the Swiss Alps, is a marvel of engineering. It's the world's largest and deepest traffic tunnel, and the efforts put into overcoming the challenges of constructing such a massive infrastructure are truly commendable. The 57-kilometer stretch is an incredible feat, considering the geological obstacles posed by the Alps. The decision to build the tunnel was undoubtedly a necessity, given the limitations of existing transportation routes due to weather conditions and increasing traffic. With an investment of nearly 70 billion euros and 17 years of construction, the completion of the tunnel signifies a significant step forward in enhancing connectivity between Italy and the northern part of Europe. The tunnel's depth of over 2,440 meters below the surface showcases the determination and innovation of engineers in tackling complex geological conditions. It's not just a passage. It's a symbol of human ingenuity and collaboration, making travel more reliable and efficient for the countries involved. The St. Gotthard Base Tunnel is a testament to what can be achieved when technology and determination converge. The tunnel consists of two giant tubes with an 8-metre diameter, each allowing trains to travel at a speed of 250 kilometres per hour for the next 100 years. What was the construction process like for such a colossal project as the St. Gotthard Base Tunnel? The construction process of the St. Gotthard Base Tunnel stands as a testament to the ingenuity and perseverance of modern engineering. Delving into the intricacies of this colossal project, the initial phase involved the excavation of three vertical access shafts strategically placed in the Alps. These shafts served as entry points to reach the main tunnel line. To gain a comprehensive understanding of the geological conditions, engineers embarked on the excavation of a smaller exploratory tunnel. The heart of the construction involved the utilization of a highly specialized rock tunnel, boring machine a technological marvel with a substantial investment of 20 million euros. This intricate piece of machinery played a pivotal role in the excavation of the main tunnel, navigating through the formidable challenges presented by the rocky subterranean terrain. Simultaneously, a dedicated team employed controlled explosives to craft essential cross passages and emergency shelters within the tunnel. This meticulous approach aimed not only to expedite the construction process, but also to ensure precision in the creation of interconnected spaces vital for safety and functionality. The segmented excavation method, while promising efficiency, demanded an unwavering commitment to precision. Underground construction, in contrast to surface building, presented unique challenges where the slightest error could lead to catastrophic consequences. To maintain the necessary accuracy, engineers implemented cutting-edge laser-guided systems. A laser theodolite, strategically positioned on the tunnel wall, harnessed the principles of light propagation to guide the tunnel boring machine along a meticulously calculated path. Transporting the immense tunnel boring machine to the construction site was a logistical puzzle in itself. Recognizing the impracticality of transporting it intact, engineers opted to disassemble the machine into manageable sections. These sections were then carefully shipped to the tunnel entrance in Germany, where the meticulous reassembly process unfolded over an extensive four-month period. The complexity of this operation extended beyond the construction site. A sophisticated logistics network came into play, orchestrating the movement of hundreds of heavy trucks navigating challenging mountainous terrains and narrow roads. These trucks were tasked with transporting the myriad components required for the construction, underscoring the coordination and planning essential to the project's success. How long did it take to build the tunnel? The construction of the St. Gotthard Base Tunnel, spanning a modest 57 kilometers, was a monumental endeavor that unfolded over an impressive 17-year duration. Throughout this extensive timeline, the tunnel boring machine made daily advancements of 20 meters, with interruptions occurring when it encountered compacted rock layers. The entire construction process, from its initiation to completion, unfolded over the same 17-year period, emphasizing the considerable span of time dedicated to this ambitious project. 
The daily progress of the tunnel boring machine, while seemingly incremental, collectively contributed to the realization of this groundbreaking infrastructure. As construction commenced, many of the workers involved were in the phase of their lives when their children were attending elementary school. Remarkably, by the time the project concluded, these same workers had transitioned into the role of grandparents. This transformation underlines not only the prolonged duration of the construction effort, but also the profound impact it had on the lives of those who dedicated themselves to the realization of the St. Gotthard Base Tunnel. What makes the tunnel strong enough to be so large? In the construction of the tunnel, the engineering team utilized a staggering 4 million tons of concrete, a quantity equivalent to 40 times the height of the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. Daily operations involved the excavation of around 2,000 tons of broken rocks, which were transported out of the tunnel via a conveyor belt. At a dedicated facility, these rocks underwent recycling and transformation into circular concrete segments. To match the pace of the tunnel boring machine, these segments were continuously transported 24 hours a day to the tunnel's deep end. There, workers utilized mechanical arms to precisely install the four-ton concrete segments. The pipe sections exhibited variation in size and interface, each containing two layers of a thick, waterproof membrane. Careful assembly by workers was crucial to ensure the tunnel's structural integrity. Enhancing the tunnel's strength involved pouring concrete on the outer layer of the pipe sections. As the tunnel boring machine advanced, the inner walls of the tunnel were formed simultaneously. Workers in the rear were responsible for installing rails and signaling systems. However, encountering softer, Compressed rock layers prompted a return to original drilling and blasting methods. To expedite construction, advanced 3D rock drilling rigs were employed. These rigs sprayed water while the drill bit rotated, cooling the constantly heating drill bit and improving the working environment. Precision drilling with millimeter accuracy preceded the placement of yellow explosives by explosives experts a one millisecond delay between explosive detonations broke the rocks into manageable pieces. After blasting, the uneven rock wall surface was addressed by workers who applied a layer of concrete. Copper core circular brackets were used for support, offering movement within a certain range and resistance to the pressure of mountain squeezing, distinct from traditional steel arches. Despite the immense challenges posed by building this tunnel, the workers displayed perseverance and ultimately succeeded in completing the formidable task. What makes a tunnel safe? When trains navigate through the St. Gotthard Base Tunnel, the limited view for passengers makes safety a top priority. To address this concern, engineers opted for two separate tracks, ensuring one-way travel and minimizing the risk of train collisions. However, the spectre of fire remained a significant worry, reflecting on a tragic event in 1999 at the Mont Blanc Tunnel where a truck caught fire, spreading to over 30 cars and causing 39 fatalities. The engineers were acutely aware of the potential dangers. The intense smoke and soaring temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees underscored the urgency of fire safety measures it took more than three days and over 50 firefighters to bring the Mont Blanc tunnel fire under control. Given the St. Gotthard base tunnel's substantial 57 kilometer length, the prospect of a fire prompted engineers to take robust precautions. Three emergency shelters were strategically integrated into the tunnel, each equipped with fire doors. These doors led passengers to a 470 meter long central refuge room, providing a safe space to wait for rescue in case of an emergency. The refugee room in the St. Gotthard Base Tunnel is accessible to rescue teams through the other tunnel. To safeguard occupants from toxic gases, the ventilation system activates remotely. Powerful fans positioned above the tracks draw in toxic smoke and expel it through vents above, while inlet fans simultaneously introduce clean air into the tunnel. This innovative safety system incurred an additional cost of 38.5 million Swiss francs per refugee room, contributing to a total project 
cost of 95.6 billion Swiss francs, or approximately 68.1 billion Chinese yuan. While the St. Gotthard Base Tunnel hasn't significantly reduced travel time, official data indicates a mere 50-minute reduction in travel time between Milan and Zurich, it has made substantial strides in enhancing transportation and trade between European countries. Its resilience in the face of challenging weather conditions and heavy mountain traffic underscores its importance.